Sigmund Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. Female semen. Hmm. Weird. Uh, Miami Freak Offs. Sounds like a ditty party. Uh, Saudi women's rights don't really exist. And the worst doctor of all time. Welcome back. Welcome to all my new Sigma Tigers. Uh, the Sig Tig community is growing every day, and I want to thank you all. If you have a question or concern or something you'd like to know about, go ahead and throw it in the comments. And if you're interested in finances or trading crypto or trying to make a little bit of money during this bull run, go ahead and check out at Sigma Tiger Trade, my other channel, I'm talking about all kinds of financial stuff. And let's dive right in. Boom. Metro Vancouver Transit Police say they don't know whether a sexual assault suspect is male or female, despite semen evidence. So we have some. Uh, female semen here potentially the metro vancouver transit police say they don't know if the primary suspect in a skytrain sexual assault is male or female despite having receipt recovered sorry semen during the investigation february 8th the transit police issued a press release pleading to help uh pleading for help to identify the suspect while photos and videos showed what appeared to be a male with long hair some basic information on the suspect was curiously omitted from the release no pronouns were used and no information on the suspect's sex was included in a recorded phone call with journalist amy ham constable amanda steed said the information had been intentionally left out because the trans police were unsure of how to refer to the suspect we don't want to hurt their feelings uh we've left out We've left it out for a reason. It's because we don't know. The video evidence shows someone who would appear female, who is female presenting, but the physical evidence is that of a genetic male, Steer said. She later confirmed in an email to the independent news outlet Redux that the physical evidence is, in fact, the suspect's semen. I mean, case closed, isn't it? Like, no, 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 no. Like, we don't want to hurt this individual's feelings, like after raping somebody and ejaculating on them. Uh, uh, it might be a woman, sir. We'd, we'd want her to blush. Despite claiming that the trans police didn't know what the sex of the suspect was, Steed admitted that they believe he has a penis. Suspects, we believe, does have a penis, said Steed when asked if the victim was raped, but the video shows someone who appears to be female presenting, so that's why we left the gender out, because we weren't really sure how this person identifies. We don't want to get it wrong. And uh, then they reached into their bag and pulled out their big red clown nose and then strapped on their oversized shoes and started dancing around because this is absolutely a joke what's happening in this country. Uh, all Western nations, to be honest. The only charge the Venezuelan TikTok influencer is facing right now is from today. Uh, so what's going on? Alien present without admission or parole. So here is the individual, Moreno. We covered him several times. He was on TikTok saying, come get your return, uh, let's go ahead and break into these houses. And then he was on again after being banned on Facebook or something, and snot coming out of his nose with a little baby, saying, why me? Uh, and, uh, yeah, he was on the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, program where you don't have to go through detention. It's like the, uh, the, uh, basically you put a little thing on your, your ankle, and they say, go ahead and live your life and be cool, just don't hurt anybody, and come back and check in. And he didn't. And anyway, Ice caught him. And they're basically just saying he's, uh... He's only here illegally, so we're just gonna let him go, more than likely. We'll let him walk around again. We'll just go ahead and put that, uh, detention band on his, uh, on his ankle again. He's not allowed on TikTok anymore. Just get this clown out of the country! Like, get him out of here! Look at him! Loser. He has no benefit to anybody in this country. He's already proven that. Get him out! Is it that is it a big of a problem? Like imagine someone came to your house and they're just hanging around your property. And they weren't doing any gardening, they weren't cleaning up any messes or anything. They were telling their friends to come over to your house. And when you leave and go to work that they're gonna go in there. I mean, how would you feel? Would you be like, oh, okay, like you know, you can let him stay around, you know, I trust him, I think he'll be okay. Anyway, El Paso judge orders release of migrants accused of border riot, of course. You know, all those uh migrants who were like super upset and went against the National Guard and sort of tussling and wrestling and uh, well guess what the uh the presiding magistrate judge humberto acosta made his ruling on sunday march 31st during an online teleconference bond hearing where he accused the el paso district attorney's office of not being ready to proceed with detention hearings for each defendant another hearing 
for more defendants is expected Monday. So, yeah, it is the ruling of the court that all the rioting participation cases will be released on their own recognizance. Okay, so you guys should have been better prepared, and uh, we are not obviously prepared to hold these guys, so uh, we're just going to let them free. And uh, Make sure you uh, cross your T's and dot your I's next time, guys. <laughs> we're letting the criminals run free. What is going on? Like, what? who are these people? Anyway, need some more proof? Here's someone's idea that uh, climate change is fake. This is 1620 Plymouth Rock at sea level. 1920 Plymouth Rock still at sea level. And 2023 Plymouth Rock remains at sea level. Uh, 99 years of sea level rise. Palm Beach, Sydney in 1917 compared to 2016. For years they called it global warming. They were proven over and over that no such thing is happening. Then they started calling it climate change again. It is a hoax. Unprecedented climate change has caused sea level at hit Sydney Harbor to rise approximately 0.0, .0 centimeters over the past 140 years, as you can see. And then 1898, a photograph of uh, the Statue of Liberty right next to a photograph in 2017. So basically what this individual is attempting to show you is that all the alarmism that came from a 1977 article saying, uh, you know, sea level rise is going to cause New York to go underwater, didn't happen. Uh, it's going to cause snowstorms to come and it's going to bury us all in an ice age, didn't happen. Uh, every time they attempt to apply some sort of rhetoric onto us, some narrative, it just immediately gets dismissed. Except for the fact that, oh, there's carbon. Got to reduce carbon now. People don't even know what that is or how much is in the uh, the atmosphere. It's like 0.03% or 0 0.04. It just like ticked up like 0 0.05 or something. Anyway... Uh, yeah, so there it is. Miami freak-offs and underage sex lawsuits paint pictures of Diddy's world. So, uh, of course, everyone's covering P. Diddy. P. Didn't. P. Maybe. Uh, well, you know, everyone knows what he's up to, okay? Just like Bill Cosby and uh, Jeffrey Epstein and the other disgraced uh, director, whatever his name was, the big fat dude. Uh, lawsuits describe sex parties so brutal that people lured into attending them would often vomit and pass out from being drugged, beaten, and raped, sometimes for hours on end. Look out. The parties often took place in some of Miami's most luxurious hotels, the Mandarin Oriental, sweeping views of the Biscayne Bay, the One Hotel on the White Sands of South Beach, and the fabled Fontainebleau. The iconic landmark hotel that symbolizes the timeless elegance of old Miami. But what is alleged to have happened in these lavish hotel rooms, not just in Miami, but also in five-star hotels in Atlanta, New York, Las Vegas and Los Angeles were sex parties so brutal that young women and men lured into attending them would often vomit, pass out from being drugged, beaten, raped, sometimes for hours on end. Several lawsuits filed over the past six months allege that flamboyant music producer Sean Diddy Combs called these self-styled bacchanals freak-offs or epos. The gatherings were specific, sorry, specially arranged for his hedonistic appetite, and according to the lawsuits, Combs often filmed the encounters as he directed his staff to change the lighting or bedding to better display the women and men who were performed for him sexually. Dangled over a hotel balcony, one of his alleged victims was Cassandra Cassidy Venturi, an aspiring young R&B singer who met Combs when she was 19 and he was 37. As a founder of Bad Boys Records, he helped promote her career, then forced her into years of physical and sexual servitude. Uh, Venturi alleges in a lawsuit she filed against the megastar in November in Manhattan Federal Court. Uh, it was settled for like $30 million, so like, you know, it's pretty much an admission of guilt. At one of the hotel parties, she claimed a drunken Combs beat her, then later picked up one of the women in the hotel suite as if she were a child and dangled her over the 17th floor balcony of the unidentified hotel. There were no other assaults at hotels around the country. There were other assaults at hotels around the country, according to the lawsuit, and Combs often paid the hotels tens of thousands of dollars for damages. And to take possession of any security footage they may have captured his violent behavior, the lawsuit claims. One day after Ventura filed a lawsuit, which garnered international attention, the rapper settled it for an undisclosed sum, $30 million. Combs noted that settlement was not an admission of wrongdoing. Of course, <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, I definitely didn't do anything wrong, but here's $30 million to shut your mouth. The horrifying allegations opened the floodgates to more lawsuits and ultimately a federal sex trafficking investigation that led agents from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security to search Combs the state Miami Beach and Los Angeles on Monday. Federal investigators were concerned that Diddy's 54 would destroy evidence, prompting them to obtain search warrants. A source familiar with the investigation told Miami Hero. So tonight came out uh, Death Row Records founder and uh, CEO, whatever, he's in jail now. He was like, yo, Diddy. He was like, uh, they're coming to get the evidence, right? So your honeypot is going to get destroyed, and now they're going to take it over. Third attorney denies all the allegations, of course. Plane linked him in the Caribbean island of Antigua and Barbuda on Tuesday. High-ranking uh, government sources told the Herald there was no record that he entered the country. His plane was spotted on the Opalaka 
Airport Wednesday, according to photos. Uh, unprecedented ambush, she's calling it. Parties at the strip club. Jones claims that he was directed by Combs and others employed by him to go out to the booty trap on the river in Miami Strip Club to recruit sex workers and other men uh, and women for Combs and his friends to pay for sex. Mr. Combs provided Mr. Jones an exclusive bad boy baseball cap and required him to wear it to the booty trap on the river as a signal to any sex worker that he approached that Mr. Combs was in town and he had sent Mr. Jones to recruit them. Jones said in a lawsuit filed in New York. Uh, Donald Zalerkin, Zacharin, who represents the music executives initially named by Jones, called Jones' allegation against his client a complete fabrication. Yeah, so whatever. He paid to get hotel security footage, suit claims. Yeah, so here's the deal. Diddy is a deviant, okay? P-deviant. Feds demanded ID of YouTube users who watched certain videos. Investigators sent a video link to a suspect, then demanded Google identify anyone who watched it in a week. In a, in a week. Anyway, there, there you go. Some more... Uh, issues for PC World and their editor to look at. We've all made that joke, searching for this in Google is going to get me on an FBI watch list. No, we haven't. Sounds like you're up to some creepy stuff. But according to a recent report, that might actually be true. If you watch some very specific YouTube videos last year, a United States federal court ordered Google to turn over the identities of tens of thousands of users who watched certain videos in a specific time frame. Federal investigators obtained court-approved subpoenas for any YouTube viewers who watch tutorials on mapping via drones and augmented reality software. According to a report from Forbes, the investigators had been communicating with suspected money launderer undercover, sent them links to relevant videos, then demanded Google identify anyone who had watched the videos immediately. So what's the problem? Well, they're honey-trapping people, and uh, they want to know, like, well, what happens if they do it with, like, a conservative video, an Antifa video, or a Proud Boys video? They're going to put it out, or a J6 video. And then they want to know all the people who watch that. Well, it's a major invasion of privacy is what it is. Uh, it's a breach in privacy. Typically, aren't acted upon unless a victim uh, fights them in court, often resulting in lengthy legal battles that can be reached in the United States Supreme Court for being results. So it's going to cost a fortune to get through this, and the, uh, the average man is not going to be able to do that. Unless there's a Clax action lawsuit. It seems like uh, the DOJ and the American government are absolutely gone rogue. And uh, they don't care about you at all. UN picks Saudi Arabia to lead women's rights forum despite abysmal records. So yeah, let's go ahead and pick uh, the country with the most suppressive women's rights to lead the Commission on Status of Women. An unopposed bid by the UN. So this is the group. United Nations, that everyone feels like we should be involved in, we should be supporting, and they come out with something like this. How do you feel about this, women? Saudi Arabia has been chosen as the chair of the UN Commission that is supposed to promote gender equality and empower women around the world, after an unopposed bid for leadership condemned by human rights groups because of the kingdom's abysmal record on women's rights. The Saudi ambassador to the UN, Abdulazi al Wasil, uh, was elected as chair of the Commission on the Status of Women by acclamation on Wednesday, and there were no rival candidates and no dissent at the CSW's annual meeting in New York. al Wasil was endorsed by the group of Asia-Pacific states on the commission uh, when the outgoing chair of the Filipino envoy to the UN, Antonio Emmanuel Lagdemio, asked the 45 members if they had any objection. There was silence in the chamber. I hear no objection. It is so decided. Normally, a country holds the chair for two years, but the Philippines was put under pressure from other members of the Asia group to split its tenure and pass the post on to another country after one year. Bangladesh was expected to take over, but late in the process, Saudi Arabia stepped in and lobbied for the chair in what is widely seen as an attempt to burnish the kingdom's image. Yeah, or to sway that gender ideology narrative into uh, the direction of conservatism, because these guys are not messing around. They would never subscribe to this gender ideology stuff, 100%. Like, if you walked up to an Arab man in Saudi Arabia as a biological man dressed as a woman and tried to hit on him and he was aware of it, he would likely murder you. And it would be okay because their law over there is strictly opposed to anything like that. Whoever's in the chair, which is now Saudi Arabia, is in a key position to influence the planning decisions, the taking stock, and looking ahead in a critical year for the commission, Tadros said. Saudi Arabia is now at the helm, but Saudi Arabia's own record on women's rights is abysmal and a far cry from the mandate of the commission. Saudi mission in the U.S. did not the U.N. did not respond to the request for comment. Saudi officials have pointed to a personal status law established in 2020 in evidence of progress in women's rights. Okay, so let's go ahead. However, law stipulates that a woman who has to obtain the male's guardian permission to marry under the law, a wife has to obey her husband in a reasonable manner, while her husband's financial support is dependent on the wife's obedience. If you disobey, you get nothing. 
Refusal to have sex with her husband, live in the marital home, or travel with him without a legitimate excuse can also justify the withdrawal of financial support under the law. Amnesty International said in a leaked draft, the forthcoming new penal code fails to protect women and girls from all forms of gender-based violence. Yeah, I mean, that sounds like a terrible rule to me. YouTube star, your fellow Arab, allegedly kidnapped in Haiti for $600,000 ransom while en route to meet gang leader Barbecue. All right, so we have the guy, uh, your fellow Arab, who was uh, talking to Barbecue online and said, hey, can I come do an interview for Clout? And they were like, yeah, bring your fat ass over here and we'll have some lunch because we're cannibals. Your fellow Arab, whose real name is Addison Pierre Malouf, was on the island to interview the man popularly known as Jimmy Barbecue Sarizer. Sarizier, and the most powerful gang leader in the country. On March 14th, Malouf was taken by a gang known as the 400 Mawozo, led by Kingpin Lanmo 100 Jew, who is on the FBI Most Wanted list. Malouf is being held for a ransom of $600,000. Around 40000 has been paid so far to the hostage takers, reports Haiti 24, a Haitian colleague, was also taken. Malouf, was in a Lebanese, who is of Lebanese descent, is based in Atlanta. The official website, Malouf refers to himself as a comedian, pro player, and content creator, man of the people. One of Malouf's colleagues, Twitch stream Lalam, confirmed in an ex post that his friend had been taken hostage. He ended the message on a positive note saying, he'll be out soon. And there's an image of the uh, soon-to-be uh, dinner of the Haitian cannibals. Yeah. All it takes is one stupid gang member holding AK-47 for one thing to go wrong. And guess what? That's exactly what happened, you dumbass. Duke University researchers help transgender woman, 50, breastfeed her grandchild using experimental hormone drugs so she could feel what it's like to be a real mom. But critics call it, frankly, disturbing. Yeah, we cover this. Uh, the NHS over in, um, in Europe uh, doing the same type of things, calling them chest feeders. Uh, women, that is, uh, he is breastfeeding because he is uh, a real woman, of course, identifying as one. Trans woman has been helped to breastfeed her grandchild in what is thought to be a world first. Uh, the unidentified 50-year-old was helped to express up to 30 milliliters of milk at a time after a four-week course of hormone treatment. Uh, researchers from Duke University reported the woman lactated for a total of two weeks and was able to feed the four-month-old baby. And uh, yeah, great disgusting the motivation for inducing lactation was to create a bond from breastfeeding that she had not been able to experience with her own five children because she's a dad she was moved to tears by the experience which she said she had added benefit of affirming her female gender making her breast larger and there's a, a, a disturbing in the image of the individual i'm gonna vomit here in my mask uh, the patient later stopped the course of treatment due to logistical barriers. According to the researchers who published their study in the journal Breastfeeding Medicine, the patient had said that they had a last minute idea about breastfeeding their grandchild. The patient first expressed a unique desire to breastfeed her expected grandchild at an appointment with her endocrinologist. In the spring of 2022, they wrote, she disclosed that this was a last minute idea that came to her very close to her daughter's due date. At five weeks after initiating treatment changes for lactation induction, she reverted to her previous medication regimen. She states that she stopped pursuing her personal goal to breastfeed due to the logistical barriers such as the need to take care of her grandchild while her daughter was pumping. Her primary motivation for inducing lactation was to experience the bond that she missed. Patient uh, tearfully reported that this was a significant emotional experience for her that felt very different from formula feeding uh, for her other children. She states she has been in a special bond with the baby and she's grateful she regrets that she has not known about the possibility sooner and wished that other transgender women could be known the breastfeeding baby can be a reality. Uh, menstruation, not so much yet, even though they claim it. So, uh, probably be there soon gastroenterologist well what's that this is a gi tract doctor and this guy is probably going to be the worst doctor ever we covered the worst vet ever there uh, last week well new york has the worst doctor ever another patient has accused new york city gastroenterologist uh ji alan chang md of sexual abuse this is the third indictment against dr chang who was employed by new york city based new york presbyterian queens from july 2022 to december 2022 according to the report a 48 year old woman alleges she was sedated for a colonoscopy at the hospital and woke up to find dr chang sexually abusing her so if you've had uh, any appointments there for colonoscopies between those two dates, go ahead and uh, seek legal advice. The patient's attorney has filed a lawsuit on her behalf and other women involved in the case who allege the NY Presbyterian Queens failed to act to remove Dr. Chang after signs of predatory behavior. It's facing more than 60 crime charges and has pleaded not guilty at each of them. In August, he was charged with 50 new counts of criminal court, drugging and sexually assaulting several women, including a patient. He was arrested in December 2022 after his girlfriend discovered videos of him drugging and assaulting her. Sounds guilty. 
The crimes detailed in these additional charges are horrific. We are deeply sorry for all the victims and their families who have endured. A New York Presbyterian spokesperson told Beckers, we have continued to work with the district and attorneys to advance the investigation as we see that justice is served. Of course! A uh, high school football player accused of beating teen to death at party, hidden dad's cabin after attack, bragged about closed casket funeral, says report. Okay, so this is the world we live in. Doesn't matter what color skin you are, you're Asian, doctor, you're drugging and raping women, you're a white uh, high school football player or college football player, and you're beating people to death, you're uh, a black individual, and you're punching people in the heads, women in New York, doesn't matter what color you are. If you're a piece of garbage, then you're a piece of garbage. If you're raised by pieces of garbage, then chances are you live in a black garbage bag as well. The Arizona high school football player accused of beating a teen to death at a Halloween party last year was allegedly hidden away by his family after the attack and bragged the boy's funeral was a closed casket service. Talon Renner, 17, along with the other six accused attackers were held on $1 million bond and pled not guilty to connection to the killing 16-year-old Preston Lord. Queen Creek Police unearthed new details about how Renner was moved by his father, Travis Renner, to the family's $850,000 cabin in Sholo, three hours away from his home. Days after Lord's death, according to documents reviewed by the AZ family, the claims were allegedly made to police by his father's ex-girlfriend, who shared she had broken up with Travis Renner before the hor horrifying murder, but was still close with the family and still had access to the father's credit card history, according to the uh, report. She claimed to have messaged Renner described as a fighter and an angry kid on Snapchat while he allegedly hid at the cabin about three hours away from his home where he shared a photo of him walking the family dog, Gucci. She claims that in the photo, the killer, the accused killer's teen's jaw was swollen. His father's ex then revealed uh, to law enforcement that the Renner family attorney had allegedly advised them to let his hands heal before coming back to the hometown of Gilbert. She literally told police uh, holds a lot of aggression and when he snaps, he snaps. She shared... Uh, she shared she decided to make the report. Okay, so she said she decided. I was saying, man, there, is there no editing? What is going on? Like, people, like, what's going on? There's AI that does this stuff. After seeing the lack of remorse for her ex sons head following the release of the video, surveillance allegedly showing Renner bragging about getting away with Lord's murder and how the 16 year old was given a closed casket funeral because of how badly he was beaten. So, the dude has no remorse. There's the individual who was beaten to death. God rest his soul. Can't imagine being a mom and losing a son and having people out there knowing what happened and not coming forward. Renner and six alleged bullies who referred to themselves as the Gilbert Goons have all been arrested uh, over their alleged involvement in Lord's death on October 28th, according to a Halloween party. There's uh, photos of the individual. William Hines, Jacob Meisner, Talon Renner, Taylor Sherman, Talon Vigil, Dominic Turner, and Tristan Billy. They all sound like rich people names. The teen allegedly boasted to a friend online and mistakenly killed Lord during a fight which was sparked after another suspect, Dominic Turner 20, also known as D-Money, allegedly stole a chain from a friend of Lord's. There you go. D-Money. I got in a fight, a big group fight, and I accidentally killed a kid. Renner allegedly wrote on Snapchat message, please said, I guess I'm just too strong. Oh yeah. Okay, what does this say here? I hit a kid and this kid hit his head. And then the kid, and then they kicked his head in the ground. And then I got word he died, so I don't know. Uh, a friend close to Renner told police that he hammer pounded, hammer fist, meaning pounding like a uh, hammer fashion, in the face four times and everyone surrounded him and started kicking him during the attack. Preston lying face down, someone climbed over and danced on top of him. A separate witness was also able to shed more light on what happened during the attack, telling police when Lord was on the ground, the group of kids began recording and humping the individual while he laid there dying before they all ran away. And there you have it. America, the great, has fallen. It is absolutely despicable. And it's your fault, parents. It's your fault that America's falling, okay? Your children uh, are being raised outside of the home because you need a job, okay? So uh, there should be always, I don't care what anyone says, there should always be one parent at home taking care of the kid. And likely, likely, this may not occur, okay? If you're putting your kid in daycare and all that kind of stuff, after school programs, other people raising your kids, and then you're getting like one hour in the evening at supper time, maybe, with your kid, yeah, spend some more time with your children, okay? Talk to them, ask them, hey, how you doing? What are you up to? And if they're ignoring you, then you already, you already screwed up, okay? 
your kid should never not want to love you and hang out with you. Okay, your kids should want that and they should learn from you. You are the example that you're setting for them in the future. It's your fault. The kids are bad. Okay? Second Tiger, signing up.